Well, if you have your Bibles, please turn in the Word to Hebrews chapter 11 and put a marker there. And then go over to our key verse for this series, Psalm 77, verse 14. Praise God. We're continuing on in our series entitled, Miracles. Psalm 77, verse 14 says, You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength, your power among the peoples. The NIV says, you are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. The Living Bible says, you are the God of miracles and wonders. You still demonstrate your awesome power. The first translation I read was New King James. It said, you have declared your strength. You have declared your power among the people. When God declared His power, He released it to be demonstrated. Amen? Amen. He never pulled it back in. You notice the other two translations. The first one was, you declared, so that was past tense. The other two translations was present tense. And it's all good translations. Because when they translated that, they took what God declared knowing that's present tense now. Amen. I like that. He declared it. If He declared it, it can still happen just like that. He declared that Jesus is Lord to almost 8 billion people. And anybody that wants Jesus as their Lord can have that miracle right then. I like that. In other words, are miracles out there to be taken? Thank you. Amen. They're out there right now. What are you saying, Brother Chris? We're not waiting on God. He's waiting on us to believe His Word and take what He has released. A miracle is God's power in action. A miracle is the supernatural of God overriding the natural of man. Does He want to do that? He wants you to walk supernaturally. Naturally. He wants our life to be supernatural every single day. I like that myself. A miracle is when God causes the impossible to be possible and you experience His power. When can I have that? When do you want it? Man, that sounds mighty strong, yeah. That's called chapter and verse. If I wasn't born again right now and I accept Jesus as my Lord, I got the biggest miracle this side of heaven. It's bigger than anything else we can get down here. And what did I have to do? Give up and accept Him. I didn't have to jump through any hoops. I didn't have to go to church for six months, have six months of counseling, six months of deliverance. I just accepted them. That's all I had to do. Why is the lesser miracles more difficult? I'll answer that. Your head gets in the way. Your head gets in the way. To be carnally minded is death. That, don't, that doesn't sound like a miracle there. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. That sounds like miracles. How about walking in the God kind of life? How about walking in the God kind of peace? Peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. I want that. Well, be spiritually minded. Your mind gets in the way what it is. You're a spirit, you possess a soul, you live in a body. Your soul is your will, your emotions, your intellect, it's your mind. Your body is your vehicle, your house that you function in, move around in. But your, but your spirit is the real you. 
your spirit in here, everybody in here is born again. Your spirit is one spirit with Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, he that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You're in charge of this three-part human system following the lead of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. That means you're the master of this three-part human system. That means your soul is your servant. That means your body is your servant. And when you let your body or your soul be the master, uh, that's when things go wrong. That's when you walk in the, the nature of death. To be carnally minded is death. That's Romans 8, 6. So, what do you say? we got to get our mind lined up. That's the biggest problem right there. we got to get our mind lined up. I thought faith is of the heart. Yes. But your head can stop it. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks, it gets in his heart. Romans 10.10 10 says, with the heart man believes. As a man thinks, it gets in his belief system. And you start believing what your head is saying. And when you start believing it, you start walking it out. So are you. Yep. Born again, spirit filled, love the Lord with all your heart. And not getting any, any other miracles outside of being born again. You want to know why? It's right here. It's right here. That's why it's crucial to stay in the Word. It's crucial to not go a day without getting in the Word. If you go a day without getting in the Word, you need to come up later for us to pray for you. <laughs> Proverbs four twenty through 22 says, My son, attend to my Word. Incline your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them the Word, and health to all their flesh. Well, hold it a second. If this is really true, if God's Word is really life and health to all flesh, all your flesh, all this being that gives you a fit sometimes, and then you tell me, well, I just don't have enough time to get into Word. And you wonder why your life's a mess. You wonder why you're not experiencing anything from heaven to earth. You think Matthew 6.10, when Jesus said, Declare my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He just put that in there to fill in between 6.9 and 6.11. <laughs> But you get that deceived. You know how I many people pray the Lord's Prayer and they don't have a clue what it says? Man, a lot of those uh, government organizations out there that are trying to help people in addiction, they'll pray the Lord's Prayer. Nobody gets nothing. If you get ritualistic about the Word, you get nothing. You can read your Bible every day just to read your Bible every day. You'll still get nothing. You've got to slow things down and get serious about the Word. you got to believe that Jesus said in John 14, 6, He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I'm the truth. That Bible in front of you is just not words on a printed page. That Bible in front of you is the truth. And if Jesus is the truth, when you get in the Word, you ask God for revelation, for His presence to jump off the page, because Jesus is the truth, so His presence will come off that page. And you'll get revelation. And it won't just be a book. You're just not reading it like a novel. You, you, you're getting in there and you're getting the way you need. You're getting the truth you need. And you're getting the God kind of life yes. you need. Yes. Praise God. That's Hallelujah. worth coming to the church house tonight already. I'm preaching myself happy. I'm on line three. <laughs> I love the Word. I can't get enough of the Word. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm quoting scriptures to myself. 
when I wake up, if I wake up at 2.20, if, if I could pick a good time just to wake up, I like 2.20 in the morning. Galatians 2.20, I look at, I'll be laying there, look at that clock, and, and I said, 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, and I go back to sleep. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And if I wake up and see a time that I don't have a verse on, I'll back it up a little or go ahead a little. I'll get me a verse out of the deal. I'm going to get me a verse. That clock is there for a verse, period. I'm going to find me a verse. I'm going to find me a verse. Praise God. <laughs> Why do you like Bible verses so much? Because it is spirit and life, John 6, 63. Jesus said His word, spirit and life. He said in Hebrews 4.12, His Word is quick and powerful. I like, a, I like life and power. Amen. I like all that. Yes. Have you never seen the Word this way? Just ask God for a revelation on what the pastor just said, and you'll love getting in that book. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Do you want to see more miracles? Yes. Amen? Amen. Th- we got three people amen, and I see two nods in the audience. Do you, does everybody want to see more miracles? Amen. 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 You got to get with the preacher now. Praise God. Amen means so be it. You want to release your faith by speaking. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says we have the same spirit of faith as the saints of old. We believe, therefore we speak. If I say, do you want to see more miracles? You speak your faith out and say, Amen. You just received it again. If you want to see more miracles, you got to believe for them. Mark 9.23, Jesus said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. How many things are possible to the believer? All things. things. That's anything imaginable. If you believe. If you can find a promise in the Word of God, and you start believing it, it can make anything possible. Yes, it can. Anything. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Believing is the key to seeing miracles. It's the key to seeing the impossible made possible. In this church, we're not believing for the possible. We're believing for the impossible. There's a lot of churches out there just believing for what's possible. You don't even need God for that. Think about it. We're believing for the impossible. We want to see what seems virtually impossible happen. Amen? Amen. Name some. How about somebody with one arm, he gets two again? Well, that's impossible. That's what we're after. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. But you've got to believe. You got to believe someone comes in here blind, they leave seeing. How about that? If that ain't a big deal to you, ask them. I bet it's a big deal to them. Praise God. Missing an organ? Doctor took out an organ? Well, you want God to put it back? Well, I can't see that. You know, if you say you can't see that, that means you can't believe that. And the reason why you can't believe that is because you haven't been in the Word of faith. You got to get in there and get your faith built up. You've got to develop the faith God gave you. Amen? Amen. Have y'all found Hebrews 11 yet? Praise God. <laughs> I just did that for Ivana. She'll get a kick out of that one. Hebrews 11, it says, but, but without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. God is pleased when we're in faith. God is not a taskmaster. He's not up there looking at His little children and looking at you and saying, you know, you haven't pleased me lately. That's not God. If you see God that way, you're missing God. 1 John 4.8 and 1 John 4.16 says God is love. 
It didn't say God is a dictator. He's not a dictator. The so-called other religions in the world, they have dictators. And the people that are following these idols, they're trying their best to get closer to this fake God. They'll never make it. They'll never make it. You've accepted Jesus as Lord. Not only did you get close to your God, you got your God in you. Amen. 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 You're already there. You're already there. He even told you to come boldly to the throne of grace. If he tells me to come boldly to the throne of grace, Hebrews 4.16, that means I can jump on in there and experience his presence. If he's at the throne and I come boldly in, I'm going to feel some presence. Praise God. Well, I don't feel worthy. You're not. Get over that. (laughs) You're never going to be worthy enough in you, so get over it. Get in Christ and now you're worthy and I'll jump on into the throne room. But you know why I say stuff like that? Because everybody's, the devil's playing games again. Well, you're just not worthy. Oh, duh. Yeah. That's why Jesus came. Yeah. 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 To make us worthy. Mm-hmm. You're not holy enough. I am in Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. I am in Christ. You're not godly enough. Well, I'm in, if I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, do you think I'm godly then? Yeah. I can't get any more godly. I mean, think about it. That's right. I can't get any more godly than being one with Christ. Quit looking at you. Look at Him. You're going to get down in the press every single day if you look at you. But you'll be, you'll be picked up. You'll be in joy. You'll, you'll be rejoicing when you look at Him. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 13, 14. Once you put Him on. How do I know when I didn't? Oh, you got up this morning complaining and griping and you had a headache and, and then you're a little too cold and then you burnt the toes and you were, you were just beside yourself. Huh? Spilled your coffee. Went from morning, you're out of coffee. Now you're really complaining. Can't even get my coffee today. I tell you what, what else is going to happen today? Keep running your mouth and some more stuff will happen too. I tell you what, well, by the time I get to the work, I'll probably be in a lot of traveling. There'll be accidents on the road. I might even get a flat tire. You know you do have what you say. Yes, on, yes. Why? You, why? People say, oh, I don't believe that. You get it? Yeah. Why don't you say what God says and get what He says? Amen. If you say what God says, you'll get what He gave you. You say what the devil says, you'll get what He gave you. That's right. That's right. It's funny how people believe they have what they say in the negative. They're laying off at the, at the factory. I just heard that. You just watch. You just watch. I'll be one of the first to go. You really will. <laughs> <laughs> she says bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. And then you, you, you go there and they lay you off first. And you're so dense. You're so blinded. You come back to that group and say, I told you so. I said, mark my words. You have what you say. Well, I don't believe in that. Okay. You got it negative. Why don't you go with God? Amen. Amen. Why don't you go with God? They're laying off at the factory. They'll want to keep me. You just watch. I'm a child of the king. I got favor from on high. They're not going to get rid of me. You just watch. You just watch. Mark my words. Chris, can you reverse that? If you say if you say something like you're talking about, and you realize hey, that was dumb for me to say that, can you ask for forgiveness? And be, I know you can ask for forgiveness to be forgiven, but can that undo the words you just said? Yeah, so yeah, like absolutely. It can't. Can, okay. Yeah, just say, God, I repent of this. Thank you for forgiving me. And I call I, I call that dumb statement null and void right Amen. now in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. That's it. Oh, yeah. But see, the devil will play games with your head. Oh, no, you said the wrong thing. I mean, it's over now. How come the devil has more power than God? I haven't figured that out yet. Let's just go with God, amen? Now, you don't have to ask him to forgive you because he already did it 2,000 years ago. The devil will play religious games in our head with that, too. 
You don't have to ask Him to forgive you. He already forgave you. Just take some more forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. I receive it again. If you ask Him to forgive you, you're kind of making null and void the forgiveness Jesus gave you. Are you following me? It's a good word right there. Praise God. So, God is pleased when we're in faith. He wants His kids in faith. You know why? Because His real pleasure comes from the prosperity our faith brings us. Amen. Psalms thirty-five twenty-seven. Let them shout for joy and be glad to favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of His servants. He's pleased when you're in faith because it positions you for prosperity to come your way. That's perfect. Amen? Amen. He's not a taskmaster. He's a, uh, let me help you with something. You know, God doesn't sleep, but just for the analogy, every morning when God gets up, you're on His mind. Amen? You're on His mind. He don't get up and think, man, i got to get these folks in line. Mm-hmm. Oh, Chris sure ain't listening to me now. Okay, i I, I got I to pull in some of my blessings. Mm-hmm. No, that's not Him. He just wants the best for you. Do you want to please God? Yes. Do you want to please God? Yes. Then prosper. Amen. Amen. That's what they just said. Yeah. Just go ahead and prosper. Yeah. Even if you don't want to prosper, just do it for God, would you? Amen. Just do it for God. And that's prosperity in every area of life. We're just not talking about the bank account. How about health? How about living in divine health? I like that. When we come to God, we've got to believe that He is. What's that mean? That He's here right now. Everywhere you go, you're in His presence. He's in your presence. He said He'd never leave you nor forsake you. you got to believe that He is right here, right now. But believe that He is who He says He is. God told us in Exodus 3.14, He said, I am that I am. He just said, I'm everything that you need in life. God is everything that you need in life. He says, I am everything you need in life. God is saying, I am your prosperity. I am your healing. I'm your peace. I'm your joy. I'm your protection. I'm your freedom. I'm your life. I'm your miracle. That's who He is. You have to see Him that way. You're hanging out with the God of miracles every day. If, If you just turn your gaze on Him, If you just focus on Him, I don't care where you're at. Is at home, at work? If you put your focus on Him, you'll experience Him. It's that easy. Because He's in you. You can just put your focus on Him being in you, and all of a sudden, His presence gets stronger. I like practicing the presence of God. And more you do that, the more you'll do that. Because the presence out there, you don't really care for much. So why don't we bring God's presence with us wherever we go? Why don't we light up the area where we go? Well, how can you do that? Because Jesus is the light of the world. Yes, He is. Well, right, but we're talking about you. Right, He's in me. I'm one with Him. Yes, we are. I'm one with Him. Well, I don't see that. Well, if you don't see that, it means you don't believe that. It means you need to get back in the Word. I want to light up everywhere I go with His presence. Well, what do you do to do that? Just humble yourself and let Him come through. It's not a pride statement or an arrogant statement. It's really a humility statement. I'm, I'm letting go of Chris being Lord and letting Jesus be Lord. That's what I'm doing. You know, the world will say, well, that's egotistical. Well, you just don't understand my God. We're the body of Christ. 
He's supposed to be coming through us. I mean, wasn't it Peter and John going into a, the temple and all of a sudden Peter's shadow hits somebody and gets healed? They weren't having a healing meeting. They just walking into the building. It's a shadow. That shadow's full of God's presence. Look at that, look at that. That's God's presence right there. Look at that. Man, he's with me everywhere, isn't he? Are you out there? Why don't you come with me? It's fun. <laughs> Praise God. I like practicing His presence. Amen. You know, if you check, you can feel Him on you right now. He's our Father. Doesn't He want His kids to hang out with Him? He wants you to jump up in His lap and bask in His presence. Praise God. When we believe that He is who He says He is, then He'll reveal Himself to us. He'll reveal who He is to us in any need you have. He's the need meter. You need some provision, He's the provider. You need some healing, He's the healer. Well, I've been going after my healing, I'm not getting it. Well, that's the problem. Go after the healer. You're not going to get nothing going, going after the healing. You've got to go after the healer. Amen. Man, I really need some finances. Well, you're going after the, the provision. Go after the provider. Amen. This is all about Jesus being Lord and being one with Him and letting Him use you and flow through you. It's not all about you getting everything you want. It's falling in love with Him and being in His presence and everything you can imagine you'll get. Too many people hear messages like this and just say, well, I'm going to get this, get this, get this, and get this. And you didn't mention God a bit. Wow. And you're not going to get none of it. Wow. It's all about Him. Yes. All about Him. Mm-hmm. Jesus set this up down here. Mm-hmm. He wants a relationship with you. Yes. He wants a relationship with you. He don't want you to be a son that the only time you want to see your daddy is you need some money. Yep. And that's how our world is right now. Yep. You know, if you want to hang out with your daddy to hang out with your daddy, you'll probably even get more money too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. A mother and father wants to bless their kids. Yes. Let's have a relationship with him. Amen. Yes. If you focus on your relationship with Jesus, all this other stuff's going to fall into place. I think that's Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. No, we twist it around. We seek first the, all these things, and then we think the kingdom of God and His righteousness is going to be added. Yeah, I flipped it. Did you notice that? But that's how most people are doing it. You're not going to go after the kingdom without going after the king. You can't have a kingdom without a king. He's saying, come after me. Come after my righteousness. Well, who's His righteousness? Jesus. You're the righteousness of God in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.21. Go after the Lord and all these things will be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's good. That's good. Jesus wants to reveal His life in your life. I like that. How about being at work Monday afternoon and you see the presence of Jesus manifested at the workplace? Amen. Amen. Well, expect it. Expect His power showing up. You got Him with you. Just go ahead and expect Him to come from the spirit part of you to the physical part of you. Amen. He wants you to live His extraordinary life that He came to give you. John 10.10, He said, The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly is extraordinary. Jesus came to give you His extraordinary life down here. He doesn't want His kids just living ordinary. He don't want His kids just living natural. He came to put His super on your natural. He wants you to live supernaturally, naturally. He wants you to live supernatural, naturally. Amen? Amen. 
But you've got to believe this. Mm-hmm. But I'm not there. Well, why don't we just get there? Let's get there. How do we get there? By hearing the Word of God. Right. You've got to get that faith built up. Romans 10, 8, God called His Word the Word of faith. Well, if God called His Word the Word of faith, I know where I can get me some more faith. Right in the Word. Then in Romans ten seventeen, he said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Do you want your faith stronger and stronger? He gave you the measure of faith, Romans 12, 3. But you still have to develop it. And it's his faith. He wants you to get that faith so strong when he taps you on the shoulder, you're ready to be a carrier of a miracle somewhere or to somebody. God, you can use me. I'm a carrier of your power. I'm a conduit. I'm a channel of your power. You can count on me, God. You're not going to say that if you're not staying in the Word. If you're not making the Word priority in your life. You're you're not going to even say that. You're definitely not going to say, God, you can count on me as your financial channel. You can't even believe for it. You've got to get in the Word. He said in Psalms 112, 3, Wealth and riches shall be in your house, and your righteousness shall endure forever. Why don't you believe that verse? He calls wealth and riches in your house, and your righteousness will endure forever. You're all right with that because you know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ. And that righteousness is going to endure forever, right? So why wouldn't wealth and riches be in my house? How come the righteousness will endure forever, but I'll I'll never get the wealth and riches? How come only half that verse works? You following me? Because you're not believing. You've got to believe it. He said he'll give you power to get wealth to establish his covenant. In Deuteronomy 8.18. He wants me wealthy? Yeah. So he can establish his covenant. So he can reach more people. You see where I get... Be in a financial channel. Yes. The wealth of the sinners laid up for the righteous. Well, I wish I knew who those folks are. You are! <laughs> <laughs> the wealth of the sinners laid up for me because I'm in Christ who makes me righteous. Mm-hmm. Once you believe that stuff, yeah. get some wealth coming your way. God needs some financial channels in the end of the last days right now. Amen? Amen. We want to get as many people as we can to go up on the first load. I know they're going to have seven years of tribulation to rethink it. And most of them wouldn't make it to the end because two-thirds of the population will die before the end. That's Revelation. Why don't we get them up in the first load, amen? What do you mean the first load? That's when the catching away is going to happen. That's when the rapture is going to happen. Well, I don't believe that. Well, then you'll be in the second load. It's your business. I'm going with the first load myself. I'm on the first bus. Can I get a witness? Anybody going with me? Amen. Praise God. And you know what? We're not going to be uh, criticizing you. If you want to be on the second bus, it's your business. You're not going to find me. Amen. You on the first load, Mom? Yes. Yes, amen. (laughs) I tell you what. When it's time to get in the clouds, we all there. Whoo, that's going to be so fun. And then we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to eat for seven years. Everybody get a pair of uh, elastic pants and let's eat. <laughs> Amen. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we're going to gain weight up there. No, we don't. Gaining weight's a curse, ain't it? <laughs> Has to be a curse. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, man. He wants us to live this extraordinary life. But to do that, we have to do our part. We've got to hear His Word. And God said, He'll do His part. John 6, 29, Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in Him whom He sent. If you just hear, God will work His faith in you. Believing is a work of God. 
you just got to put your nose in the book and say, Lord, reveal to me what I need. Build my faith up. Build it stronger and stronger and stronger. And His faith in you will be worked stronger and stronger. It says He's going to do it. Hallelujah. And right now, we're hearing the Word. And our faith is getting stronger. Jump over to Luke chapter 4. Let's get it just a little bit stronger. Amen. Verse 38 and 39. It says, Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. That's Simon, Peter's house. But Simon's wife's mother, his mother-in-law, was sick with a high fever. And they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served him. Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever. They asked Jesus to minister to her. He did. He didn't go in there and say, well, now, now my... My sister, God's doing a deep work in you right now. He didn't say that to her. He didn't want her to like what the devil was doing to her. No. He cut through the chase, didn't he? Yes. He took that mess out, didn't he? He rebuked the fever. What does that mean? He spoke to the fever. <laughs> he wasn't speaking to Peter's mother-in-law. He was speaking to a thing. He was talking to a work of the devil. He was talking to a fever. Can we talk to problems like that? If you want to follow Jesus' example. I do all the time. He spoke sternly to that fever and the fever left. Praise God. God's miracle work and power was manifested... Because Jesus didn't go religious. <laughs> he didn't have a religious bone in his body. Jesus spoke his faith against the problem and he shut it down. This is how miracles manifest. And God wants to continue doing those kind of works through you and me. And he really needs that type of person now in the last days. You going up to somebody and telling people, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell, that doesn't work. Because they'll probably say, what's the difference of now or later? But when you're going up there and they got a pain in their body or something wrong with them, and say, can I pray for you? And you command that problem to leave, and it leaves like that, they probably you probably got their attention. That's why Romans 2, 4 says the goodness of God leads people to repentance, not the wordiness of Christians. I don't know that verse. (laughs) You give them God's goodness. But what if it's not God's timing? You got a verse on that one? If you do, please don't speak up because you don't understand the verse you're about to quote. (laughs) God said, now is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Well, salvation is healing. Salvation is deliverance. He said, now is the day of healing. Okay, I gave you God's time. Now. When's God's time? Now. But He's doing a deeper work. Not with the devil's garbage. The Holy Ghost is the teacher of the church. Not the devil in his garbage. Is the Holy Ghost under the weather? And he had to sub out the disciplinary work that he needed for his children today? (laughs) They're religiously brainwashed. When does he want you healed? Well, technically, 2,000 years ago. But now you can have it. Amen? Amen. (laughs) If you want to really get technical about his time, it already happened. So why are you waiting in the future for something that's already happened? 
God wants you healed right now. Well, how come it hadn't happened? Because you're not in faith. I am. No, you're not. Why are you saying that? Well, first off, you're getting offended at me. And second off, you said, why ain't it happen? That's two reasons. But it did happen. It happened 2,000 years ago. And when you are in faith, you believe you received your healing according to God's word. And when you said, why hasn't it happened, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 comes into play. It says, walk by faith and not by sight. You're walking by sight. You just got out of faith and got back in sight. Well, I don't like that. I understand. My flesh don't like that either. But I'm going to walk by faith. Because now is the day of salvation. I think that's 2 Corinthians 6 too. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. We're not waiting on nothing. Let's get our miracle. He already declared it. He already released it. He's still demonstrating His miraculous power. Let's get some of it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Jump over to Mark 11 real quick. Verse 22, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. The literal translations say, Have God's faith. Wow. Have God's faith. Mark eleven twenty two. Have God's faith. To have God's faith means to live by God's faith. Yes. He says, Have it. Okay, I'll take it. And I'm going to live by it. Don't do anything outside of His faith. Habakkuk 2, 4 says, The just shall live by faith. That's seven days a week. Yeah. Romans 1, 17 says, The just shall live by faith. That's seven days a week. Yeah. Galatians 3, 11 says, The just shall live by faith. That's seven days a week. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 38, if you didn't get the first three verses, he said, Now, had to put a now there, yeah. the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Now, when we get into living by faith, things will start happening. You'll have God's faith. See, man's natural faith only, only can believe for what's possible to man. Man's natural faith can't believe for miracles. But that's not what you have. you got God's faith. you got God's faith. But when I went down to the front of the church at age 12 because I, I, I felt, I felt a, 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 a drawing to accept Jesus, when I went up there, the man said, what, uh, what do you need today? And I said, I want that Jesus you told me of. He said, well, say this after me. When I did that, I, I, I moved right into God's faith and got Jesus. My natural faith couldn't, couldn't receive a God coming into my heart. My natural faith, that makes no sense. I had God's faith at age 12. All I got to do is just keep walking in it. Keep developing it. Amen? Amen. Boy, that's good. If you think, man, this is so hard, get out of natural faith. Get back over into supernatural faith. How do I do that? What I've been saying the whole night. Get in the Word. You got to get in the Word. When you're in God's supernatural faith, you can believe for the impossible to be made possible. When we choose to live by God's faith, we'll release faith just like Jesus did. How did He do it? He spoke to fevers. In the same chapter in Mark 11, right before those two verses, I think like 13 to 21, He spoke to a fig tree. He cursed it, commanded it to die. He spoke to trees. In Mark 4.39, by faith Jesus spoke to the weather. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still, and there was a calm. You need to do that at your house. Bad weather comes your way. Don't say, Oh dear God, what's going to happen? Oh no, I don't have enough money for the roof. Tears up the roof. Oh, look at my look at my bushes. Shut up! And command that weather to be still in Jesus' name. Well, that doesn't make sense, but it makes faith. And it works. Mm-hmm. Well, it's all in my neighborhood. It's not going to be on my property. Amen. Well, you out there, why don't you come with me? It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just following Jesus. Yeah. Well, Chris, you, you act like you're trying to be like Jesus. I thought that was the idea. <laughs> who, who are you trying to be like? Can, may I ask? <laughs> don't answer that, please. <laughs> don't, don't answer that. How do we release our faith? By speaking it. Amen? 
You've got to speak it. Uh, verse 23, you're still in Mark 11. It says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be you removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. That's how you release your faith. By speaking it. He's telling you to speak to the, the mountains of problems. Command them to be gone. You know, if you put a mountain in the sea, you won't see the mountain. That's the whole analogy of that. <laughs> the mountain's gone. Amen. He wants you to speak to the mountains like He spoke to the mountains. He wants to use you to get rid of the problems in your life and and in the problems of other people's lives. You're His mouthpiece. You're the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. And that body has a mouth. Well, it's your mouth now. And Psalms 107, 20 says He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. How does He do that now? With the mouth on His body, and that's you. So speak it out. He'll confirm what you say with signs following. Mark 16, 20. You speak His word, He'll watch over His word to perform it. Jeremiah 1, 12. You speak His word in faith and He will create the fruit of your lips. Isaiah 57, 19. But you have to believe this. Because if you don't believe this, this don't mean nothing to you. Well, I'm a realist. Sorry to hear that. Once you get saved and get in God's reality, there is two realities down here. And when you say you're a realist, let me help you with the reality you're living in. It's run on the law of sin and death. I'm a realist too. I'm in God's reality, and it's run on the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So you can be a realist, I can too. And you're going to get what your reality gives you, and I'm going to get what my reality gives me. And when you're tired of yours, you can come over to mine if you like. That's Romans 8 too. Praise the Lord. What's the big deal about speaking His Word? Hebrews 1.3 says His Word is the Word of His power. It's the Word of His miracle working power. He just wants you... Hebrews 1 3. He just wants you to speak it. God doesn't do anything unless He moves through man down here. He set that up, we didn't. And He'll find somebody to use. That's why you need to say, here, here I am, Lord. Use me. Use me. You can use my mouth. I believe what you say. And my faith is strong because I stay in your word. He's just looking for people to be used. We get so sideways sometimes. Stop that. Through faith and patience, you inherit the promises. Hebrews 6.12. That's my downfall. I just, I'm never patient. Well, the, the thing about it is, you have what you say. Once you call yourself patient in Jesus, through faith and patience, you get what He promised you. You get it. Why do I need patience? Because sometimes... Between the amen and there it is, Mm -hmm. there's a time lapse. So what are you going to do between the amen and the there it is? What are you going to do in the in-between times? You going to stay in faith? Mm -hmm. Well, I tried that last week and it didn't work. (laughs) Do you hear any faith in that? But Brother Chris, you pump me up and then I go home and, and, and I do it and, and nothing happens. But you've got to get in faith. But I was. Can we start this conversation over again? I record it and so you can hear what you're saying. Because I don't think you're hearing what you're saying. None of that's faith. Stay in faith. Amen. Stay in faith. Through faith and patience, you'll get what He promised you. But I didn't. So God lied? No? Okay, so you missing it, right? Okay, praise God. You missing it. Let's stay in faith. Let's get what God gave us. 
Let's say what He says and we will get what He gave us. He wants us to have miracles in our life and He wants us to be carriers of His miracle work and power. And if you want to get there, you've got to get in the Word to get that faith built up. And then one day real soon you'll say, here I am God, you can count on me. You can use me. And He will use you. Because He's still doing miracles. Did y'all get anything out of that tonight? Praise God.